And we are back with the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Just going to reflect on what we talked about right quick. We had our WWE NXT review, our AEW uh, Dynamite Blood and Guts preview. We also talked. We also previewed um, Ring of Honor's Death Before Dishonor. Now we're going to get into some of the biggest losing streaks, some of the biggest losing records in WWE right now. We're going to talk about some of these superstars, maybe what they can do to turn it ultimately around. Obviously, send me a chat telling me your guys' opinions on maybe what you think will turn these uh, superstars around. But yeah, let's dig on into it. First, at 25 losses, as of July 2024, we have the top 10 uh, biggest losers in WWE. You have Drew McIntyre. You have Drew McIntyre, and it kind of it, it seems kind of crazy. Uh, Drew McIntyre has been just electric for WWE, especially during the pandemic. And this just goes to show, this just goes to show how once when WWE kind of had the option to kind of mess around in the pandemic, you, you know, didn't really have to worry about ticket sales, you know, didn't, you know, of course, merchandise sales is, you know, a big revenue the scale and stuff like that, but you didn't really have to worry too much. So this gave WWE a chance to kind of experiment on Drew McIntyre. I thought he was an amazing champion, but you know, every, you know, ever since his career started, uh, you've had, you have him at, uh, 25 losses, 25 losses, is, you know, which isn't bad. All these losses, it's not crazy. But uh, Drew McIntyre, I honestly would expect more from Drew McIntyre. All right, at number 26, I have EO Sky. EO Sky, one of the, you know, the, the quote unquote, kind of the underscale leader of damage control. I feel like when Asuka comes back, I feel like they're going to kick out Dakota Kai. But, um, I, she, you know, former WWE Women's Champion, lost it at WrestleMania. Um, Kind of crazy to kind of see here at 26 losses. But, you know, no surprise. I feel like, you know, her kind of dabbling on into, you know, trying to find a place. And, you know, before she jumped into damage control, before everything was kind of started, she was, you know, kind of on her own, not really establishing much, much like you saw with Kyrie Sang, much like you saw with Dakota Kai. And before Asuka joined, I feel like Asuka has, you know, been a huge, huge, huge impact on, uh, you know, damage control. But EO Sky, you have up there one of the biggest losers at 26 losses. All right, at number 27, I talk about this guy all the time. I talk about how, you know, they're trying to push this tribal chief figure without really restoring the credibility that is Solo Sokoba. You know, he came out of NXT. He came out, you know, kind of hot. And then, you you know, he's a former North American champion. And like ever since he made it on the WWE roster, playing second fiddle, being the enforcer of Roman Reigns, and his only highlight defeating uh, John Cena at WrestleMania 39, uh, it's it, it's you know I feel like they got to do better. And you have Solo Sokoa sitting at 27 losses in that number eight spot. Um, you know, not you know doesn't really surprise me. Doesn't really surprise me. Um, this is why I feel like WWE really does have to handle this. Uh, you know, tribal chief versus tribal chief storyline. Pretty delicately because I didn't think he was going to go after Cody Rhodes this quick at SummerSlam. I thought maybe they're going to, he was going to have a match with Randy as a thank you to be like, oh, thanks for having my back. You know what? For you having my back, I'm going to give you a chance at this WWE Undisputed Championship. I'm just kidding. I know he has a I know he has a list, but it's not that bad. But no, I'm just kidding. Uh, but uh, uh, I feel like Solo Sokoa should have just kept kicking ass. Could have, should have, you know, kept winning matches, heading into maybe Survivor Series, maybe heading into uh, at the least Bash of Berlin. But, you know, at number seven, you see Solo Sokoa. And at number six, is no surprise, to Akira Tozawa having the same amount of losses as uh, Solo Sokoa, which is pretty sad. Pretty damn sad. Knowing that right now, you have Solo Sokoa and Akira Tozawa being talked about in the same sentence, the quote unquote tribal chief, you know, like, you know, with Akira Tozawa, Akira Tozawa, he's, he would have been so much better. I do not know why they got rid of the, the cruiserweight division in WWE. Definitely stupid, bad decision should bring back the cruiserweight championship. But, you know, obviously, like, who the hell am I? Like, I'm just a wrestling fan from the moment I could freaking walk. So, uh, you know, why should WWE hire me? I'm just going to know. But Akira Tozawa, he used to be good. He used to be very good. He Now he's kind of on Alpha Academy. I don't want to say he's a joke, but he's just, um, he's, 
Oh, he's he's just that, you know, colorful, that that lovely character that, you know, but I, I, I didn't see Kiritazawa really in that position. I want to see him more with a little bit of a, you know, what John Cena would say was a ruthless aggression. I did, you know, and if they had a cruiserweight division, I feel like this guy would be doing very, very well. But, you know, since they don't, he's teaming up with Otis, you know, had, you know, had to take orders under a stubborn, self-centered jerk like Chad Gable. And you know, and then you have Maxine Dupree, who I, I honestly really have nothing against. But uh, at number six, you have Akira. Uh, no, at number seven, you have Akira Tozawa. Ten, nine, eight, yeah, seven. All right, no surprise as well here at number six. You have Shayna Baszler. Shayna Baszler is one of those superstars within WWE, kind of being jerked around. She comes out so great. You know, she had, there was a match, there was an Elimination Chamber match where she was uh, fighting to be the number one contender. You saw her fight people like Asuka. You saw her fight people like, you know, like high-end uh, women superstars. And you saw and you saw her absolutely, you know, wipe the floor, mop the floor with these superstars. And, you know, then you have her lose. Then she goes, you know, she doesn't just go back down to the mid-card. Shayna Baszler goes down, 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 down. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, but like, she's, she deserves more. She deserves more. She's she's been around the wrestling industry for a long time. Obviously, has some you know some experience in UFC. But um, Shayna Baszler is one of those superstars, just like Bobby Lashley. That I'm like, damn, these superstars could have been great. They have potential. They have strength, endurance, stamina, charisma, enthusiasm, and ring capabilities. You know, she, they could have been so damn great. But, you know, WWE, they fumbled on, uh, on Shayna Baszler. All right. At number third, at number five, with 32 losses, you have Dominic. Dirty Dominic Mysterio. Not really surprising to see him kind of, you know, here down uh, at, on this list. But at this point, I feel like they're kind of pushing the storyline between uh, him and Ray Ripley, you know, trying to push it so hard to the point where it looks like Eddie Guerrero on China. You kind of have to let Dominic Mysterio ultimately spread his wings and kind of, you know, kind of be more of an asset. Kind of be more of an asset to the team. Obviously, this guy has a shoulder injury. He has a no, shoulder an elbow injury. He needs Tommy John surgery. He he uh, um, he enticed. He decided. He you know he doesn't want to take. He doesn't want to get a surgery. He doesn't want to get the surgery. WWF that you know um, according to I think it was Cage Side Seats I read an article saying that WWE is just kind of gonna kind of keep him around gonna kind of keep him you know just kind of you know that's why you really don't see him in any hellacious uh, matches and stuff like that usually he plays like second or third fiddle you see him in a tag team match you see him in a, uh, in a three on three match or when he plays one on one you, you know someone interferes and stuff like that Liv Morgan or Rhea Ripley or someone from the LWO so I, I feel like Dominic Mysterio, he could be better. He could be a thousand and ten percent better. But sitting at thirty-two losses, you have um, Dominic Mysterio, and back to back his uh, Judgment Day, his fellow Judgment Day superstar. Sitting at thirty-five losses, you have Finn Balor. This is also another thing that I really, honestly, you know, don't like. Uh, Finn Balor, when he came from NXT, came. He was the first ever WWE Universal Champion. He injured his shoulder, had to relinquish his title. Ever since then, never really made it up to his, his full potential. Never really made it up to the status quo where he should have been. Uh, one of Triple H's superstars when he was running NXT. One of his favorite superstars. And uh, once when um, you know Finn Balor came back, Vince McMahon effed him up. Vince McMahon effed up his storylines. I honestly thought, I honestly think him being in the Judgment Day kind of slowed him down. But I feel like, you know, Triple H kind of put him in there or Vince McMahon there. Like, you know, let's keep this guy relatively relevant to for, you know, he could possibly come back and, you know, go on a run. You know, he has the enthusiasm. He has the endurance. And he has uh, people like Finn Balor. People love Finn Balor. Obviously not now part of the Judgment Day. But, you know, when he comes back, you know, Prince Devine. Finn Balor, the Demon King, whatever. I think whenever he comes, you know, out of his shell, but I don't see him leaving the Judgment Day anytime soon. Definitely think uh, he's going to be the new leader once when uh, Damian Priest is ultimately stomped out. 
All right. At number three, you have Kyrie Sane taking on 35 losses. Uh, Kyrie Sane is one of those other superstars, uh, like I was talking about with EO Sky and Damage Control, where she ultimately joined forces with EO Sky to, uh, you know, kind of have a better future, kind of have a better future with Bailey, with Dakota Kai. Um, definitely, you know, this, I think she's a special superstar. You know, I remember when she was the Pirate Princess, but uh, right, you know, being with uh, Damage Control, I feel like she could get better bookings than she does right now. But, of course, you have um, the new stable with Caden Connor, Katana Chance, and Lava Valkyria. You have Sonya Deville with Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark on Monday Night Raw. And I guess at the point where I was like, okay, now what's going to happen with Damage Control? Whatever happens with Damage Control is going to ultimately affect uh, what happens in the future with Kyrie Singh's, uh, you know, her contract with her, um, you know, because if you're not being liked by the superstars, if you're not achieving success, if you're basically being turned into a jobber, uh, which I feel like uh, Damage Control is kind of being, you know, kind of being done dirty a little bit. So... I think, you know, I think the world of Kyrie Singh would hate for her to leave anywhere else or be anywhere else besides WWE. But, uh, yeah, at 35 losses, you have, um, you know, you have Kyrie Singh. At 39, you have yet another Judgment Day member, J.D. McDonough. J.D. McDonough and Finn Balor have been together for, like, ever. But uh, I feel like J.D., I feel like he could be good. I feel like he could be good. In uh, you know, like a WWE cruiserweight kind of uh, kind of way, but it's you know, like I said, they got rid of the cruiserweight division. Have no idea why. Now he's kind of sitting there, uh, you know, co tag team champions with Finn Balor, and yeah, it's cool and all, but I don't know why it doesn't seem like the world tag team champions under JD McDonough and Finn Balor it doesn't really seem like it's must prestige. It doesn't really seem like it should be really being taken. Uh, maybe because I feel like Judgment Day is broken. Maybe I feel like it's holding on by a thread. Um, you're one. Dominic Mysterio screw off your one uh, J uh, Damian Priest um, you know uh, rage quit from uh, you know from Judgment Day ultimately you know kind of being disbanded a little bit so at number two JD McDonough at 39 and the person with the most losses as of July 20 uh, July 2024 Shinsuke Nakamura you know what? I feel like this is another superstar that they kind of did really, really bad. He had so much success in NXT. He was loved when he made it into the main roster. Won the Royal Rumble, but then lost at AJ Styles. Went heel. And then he was, you know, had his a new theme song where he was like, I don't want people singing along with my theme song. And then uh, he disappeared for a little bit. Nobody really thought about Shinsuke Nakamura. Then he came back with his old gig and everybody was like, oh, cool. Let's just forget about how much of an arsehole this guy was. Uh, but, uh, um, one of those other superstars, you know, much like Finn Balor, much like um, Shayna Baszler, much like Bobby Lashley, another superstar that WWE, you know, and, and much like, you know, like Keith Lee, like Keith Lee, Aleister Black, uh, even Ember Moon when she was with WWE, you promoted them too quick to the point where you're like, okay, this guy's going to do wonders on the main roster. But as soon as he makes it there, you're like, oh, sh like, where do we put him? Like, where do we put him in the storyline and stuff like that? This guy's obviously great. This guy's loved by the, by the WWE universe. But, you know, I don't know. It just seems like it's, you know, I feel like they kind of did Shinsuke Nakamura kind of wrong. Would love to see better from him, but obviously his career is not over yet. I feel like WWE continues to sign Shinsuke Nakamura. But, um, uh, yeah. All right, guys, now we're going to move on to our fifth and final segment. We're going to edit up really quick here. It's our Wednesday's weekly wrestling news. So, hey, do not go anywhere. 